Hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar where we are going to focus on leveraging mobile technology for social distancing in face-to-face -face classrooms. My name is Colin Walker and I teach in the media program here at Valdosta State University, but I'm also serving as an interim training specialist for the Center for Excellence in Learning and Teaching and the Center for E-Learning. By the end of this webinar, the goal is to have you be able to describe effective practices to leverage mobile technology for social distancing in face-to-face -face classrooms, identify classroom management strategies for mobile apps, differentiate strengths and weaknesses of various questioning and quizzing techniques to use with mobile applications, and finally, to demonstrate active learning strategies using mobile applications. For this webinar, you will need a few resources. First, make sure that you have a desktop or laptop computer available to you. Second, make sure you have a mobile device, whether that be a phone and or a tablet. If you have one that maybe is Android and Apple, that could be useful to you as well. Next, you will need a working internet connection. And finally, make sure to download Microsoft Teams apps to your computer and your mobile device before we start today's workshop. So you might be asking yourself, why are we using mobile technology when it comes to working in the classroom? Well, first, it's going to help us maintain social distance in face-to-face -face classes while incorporating active learning activities. Next, it can prevent students from contacting surfaces commonly touched by others, such as desks, devices of their peers, uh, the instructor's computer station, class whiteboards, and many other tools that we commonly use in our respective courses. It also allows us to leverage tools that are already owned and heavily used by many of our students. It can also empower our students in their teaching and learning. And then finally, it can encourage educational innovation with technology, because a lot of the times, we discover new tools and techniques while working with these devices in the classroom environment. In this next section, we're going to look at classroom management strategies for using mobile technology. So as we start talking about classroom management when it comes to using mobile technology, one of the first recommendations I would have is to survey the mobile devices that students have available to them as soon as possible for a class. You also want to ask them about their operating systems as well. The preferred operating systems to use are going to be iOS, which is used for Apple, and then Android. So a recommendation for testing is to have the students download apps that you want them to use in your class at least one day prior to the start of that class or to the start of when you plan to use that uh, app. You may want to assign your students homework to watch tutorials about how to use the app so that they can get comfortable with the app before coming to class or participating in a synchronous manner through online means. You also want to look at how the mobile apps look and act on different devices. This is where you may need to reach out to a peer who maybe has a phone that's on a different operating system from yours or maybe a different tablet because sometimes the apps act a little bit differently. As instructors, we need to have an understanding of what the student side looks when it comes to all of these different apps. And finally, make sure you have a backup plan. For example, you might want to have a desktop application or some sort of other class activity if maybe a student's unable to use an app and or their, their cell phone or tablet does not have the ability to use such an app, which is possible. So that's just some stuff to think about when it comes to the hardware side with mobile technology. So beyond just talking about what the students have available to them when it comes to hardware, we need to think about how do we choose which mobile technology to use for teaching. So first off, it requires trial and error. 
You're not always going to be successful on your first attempt, but do your best to persevere and keep working through it and reach out to your peers who also might have good ideas. Next, solicit feedback from your students. You might not want to jump in on day one with an app. Let your students try it out and then find out what problems they ran into to figure out whether it's worth pursuing that app or maybe finding an alternate app to use for an assignment or a group of assignments in your course. Think about how learners can con contribute to and consume content using specific apps in some instances. So in other words, what can the app do and how is it going to help the student learn more about certain content or applying certain techniques? Make sure to align the app with the assignment and or the learning outcomes for a specific module or the entire course. And then finally, strive for quality instead of quantity when it comes to using mobile technology. Be careful to not overwhelm your students. There's a lot of apps out there, but get them comfortable so that they can produce the highest quality possible work in your course so that they build a successful portfolio so that they have a great career. So now let's talk about tips for using these mobile apps during class time. First off, consider including a welcome message for your class. This is a place where you can even maybe tell the students, hey, here's the app that we're going to use today. So that way it puts them in the right frame of mind and or they already open up the app for you so that they can readily use it in a specific activity. Next, you might also want to incorporate a game plan that outlines the apps to be used each class day along with the activities. That's a form of a welcome message and it's also a small teaching practice for those of you who are familiar with James Lane. I strongly recommend using this approach. And then finally, make sure to try and provide an exemplar as a jumping off point to model the expectations for learning and what you hope the students can accomplish in a class. You might even want to go further, create tutorials if needed using QuickTime or another screen capture tool using your mobile device. That way the students see exactly what it will look like to use the app for the purposes of your course. So when working with mobile apps, it's important to also think about limitations that are involved with it. So first off, if you are using a mobile app that allows you to share your screen, remember the students can see everything on your screen unless you designate certain items that you want them to be able to see or not see. Also remember, mobile apps are updated over time, so it's really important to pay attention to such changes and notify your students if you notice any changes occur but also ask your students to let you know as well, because sometimes they might beat you to the punch and find certain things. And that can also build a level of trust between the students and the instructor. Another item to think about is file size. If you're using mobile apps that require large transmissions of files, try to keep those under about 60 megabytes for the best performance possible. If you start having files that are a gigabyte or more in size, that might cause some issues over time. So now as we start approaching elements of this webinar where we talk about engaging with our students, I would like you all to participate in an active learning activity. So I'd like you to pause right now for about five minutes. And I've provided a timer for a couple of minutes, but feel free to take a little bit more time if needed. What I would like you to do is write a summary of what you've learned so far in this training using a mobile note-taking app. I'd like you to write this summary from memory and not from looking back at the previous slides or any of your notes along the way.
Make sure you hold on to those notes. We're going to be coming back to that later on. So in this next section, we're going to look at how do we engage students with mobile apps. So as we begin speaking about how to engage students with mobile apps, I want to go over a few apps that are used for different purposes. So first, let's look at the apps for sharing content. So some of the ones that we have available to us are Microsoft OneDrive, which is supported by our information technology department here at Valdosta State. We have Microsoft Teams, which is also supported by IT. We have BlazeView. So this is within the Brightspace Pulse app, which is supported by the Center for E-Learning here at Valdosta State University. If you'd like assignment ideas related to using Brightspace Pulse and BlazeView in general, you can go to the BlazeView 101 course shell that you should have access to. If you don't, just make sure to send an email to elearning at valdosta.edu and they can help you out. A couple other apps that exist are Dropbox and Google Drive. They have a limited amount of storage space available, and unfortunately there's not support from VSU for these applications. So next I want to speak about some apps that can be used for live synchronous communication in each one of your courses. Because keep in mind that sometimes some students might not be able to physically be in class, but that doesn't mean that they can't be part of the class. So first we have Microsoft Teams, which once again is supported by our information technology department. In addition, there is a mobile app available for this platform as well that works really well on Android and Apple devices. We have Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, that can be found inside of the Brightspace Pulse app on mobile devices. And this one is supported by eLearning. And then finally, another one that exists is Slack. It's limited in its feature set, but some of you may be familiar with Slack based on its use in professional environments. So now let's speak about some active learning techniques. So first off, I want to talk about questioning and quizzing specifically with Microsoft Teams. A cool thing about Teams is that it actually has a lot of plugins and apps that are available to you. So these integrate with specific teams in many instances. So some examples of these include SurveyMonkey, Polly, and Microsoft Forms. I'm going to show you Microsoft Forms in just a moment. The types of questions that you can ask depend on the platform that you decide to choose. Questions such as multiple choice, short and long answer questions, ratings, Likert scale, or file submission based questions can be asked depending on which plugin you decide to use. When you think about using the plugin, remember what we talked about earlier. Go for quality over quantity so that your students can get into a routine while working inside your course. So an active learning technique we can try is to use the quiz start for the start of a class. This could also be used at the end as well. So the goal is to create a quiz at the start of the class with five questions centered on the main points you want students to learn that day. You could use true or false, multiple choice, short answer, and I'm going to recommend that you use Microsoft Forms for students to take this quiz. And try to explain to the students that this quiz is not going to be graded. However, you can publicly display and use results of the quiz to adapt to your lecture if you wish. That way you maybe focus on particular points that they may not have grasped as well. So let's take a look how to use Microsoft Forms. On the left hand side of the screen, you will see the instructor's view of Microsoft Teams. Any other web windows that appear on this screen, aside from this one on the right hand side, represent the instructor's desktop. On the right hand side over here, you're going to see a view of a student's iPad, where I'll be manipulating the uh, student access, you see what does it look like on the student end 
versus the instructor side. So let's first start off by building our quiz inside of Microsoft Forms. One of the easiest ways to probably do this is to open up your inbox on your browser. Go to this grid right here that looks like a tic-tac-toe board, click, and then click Forms. So you'll see once you're here inside of Microsoft Forms, you can make new quizzes as seen here. And then you would just go ahead and add questions. To save time, I've already built a quiz. So I'm going to go back, click Forms, and then we will have Quiz Start Example. So you'll see here that I can give names, and then I can ask different types of questions for a quiz. To share this quiz with my class, what I would do is click Share, and then copy that link. So let's go back to Teams now. So what I'll do now is I'm going to just write a message to tell the teacher that I'm here as an example student. So hi, Dr. Walker, I'm here for class today. I'll press Enter. And then you're gonna notice that Training 14 has presented this message right here. So if I'm the instructor and I want to have the students take this quiz, what I would do is just type in, hi everyone, please take this short quiz to start class today. The results will not be graded. However, I would like to know how you all are doing with the topic that was covered in our readings for homework. And then I'm going to paste. And the trick for a Windows computer is to click Control V. If you're on a Mac, hit Command V. Or you can just right click on the screen and click paste. And then there I've launched a form. So now let me show you the student view on the right hand side here. So if I'm the student and I click on this link, it's going to launch my browser. And then you'll notice I have all the questions right here. So let's answer some questions. Uh, the capital of Georgia, we'll select Atlanta. Uh, options to consider for the state fruit of Georgia. Let's go with strong to agree for a peach. But I'm just only going to disagree with the orange because I kind of like oranges. Uh, what concept did I struggle with last class? Uh, let's just say geography of Georgia. What's the state bird of Georgia? I'm going to purposely answer this wrong as a red-tailed hawk. And then what county is Valdosta located in? Lowndes. And then I'm going to click Submit. So that represents our student view. Now let's go back over to the instructor side. I'm going to click on Forms. And then if I go to Quiz Start Example, you'll notice that now it says three responses. And if I go to the responses, I will see an aggregate of all the responses that have been done so far. You'll notice that there's more than one response because of other testing that's been done with this quiz. And I wanted you to be able to see that you can actually access individual views. So I'm gonna click View Results. And then you'll notice if I go to this drop-down menu, I can select Training 14. This way I can see this person's specific answers. This is a way to kind of target if there's some sort of trend, or maybe if you have an outlier when it comes to the aggregate results related to the quiz. So this is a way to use Microsoft Forms, and you've seen the iPad view of uh, Microsoft Forms. Next, we're going to take a look at using the entry ticket strategy. So now we're going to use Microsoft Forms in a different way. 
and I'm going to show you how it would look on someone's phone. And I'm going to be using an iPhone to do this. So this next active learning technique is termed an entry ticket, but can also be used as an exit ticket for a class session. So in this, we're going to prepare a survey in Microsoft Forms with two to three questions for students to fill out as they enter or leave class. Some questions could be, what do you already know about a specific topic? What experiences have you had with the topic? And or, what would you like to know more about this topic? Ask the students to complete the survey and then quickly look through results to know ideas and trends. These can help you respond to ideas and trends throughout the class period. If it's used as an exit ticket, this can be helpful to see whether or not the main messages you wanted to get across did get across to your students. And if they didn't, you can work on that during the next class period. So now let's look at forms for creating this entry ticket. So again, on the right hand side of the screen now, you're going to see a mobile view so that you can see what students will actually see when using their phones to do this. On the left hand side, we have the Teams view. Okay, so now I would go back to Microsoft Forms again, and I can, let's see, try to make a new quiz. Okay, so we're gonna call this an entry ticket. We're gonna add some new questions. So for a short answer question, we're going to do, what do you already know about this topic? What experiences have you had with this topic? And then finally, what would you like to know about this topic? Okay, so we have that entry ticket. We click share and we get that link, similar to what we did with the quizzing technique. So I copy that, I'm going to paste that, and now you'll see on the right hand side of the screen if I access my team, you'll notice that I have a new form here. I'm going to click that, and then you'll see that I can answer my questions. Uh, nothing. I'm not sure. Everything. I click Submit. And then it will verify to the student that they submitted. Now, if I go to Responses, and I click Refresh, you'll see I have my responses. I can review those answers, and in the drop-down, I'd be able to see Train15, which is the account that I'm using at the moment. In the future, if you want to see what your students will be able to see on a mobile device, when you create your quiz, you can click Preview. And that lets you see the mobile version versus the computer version. So it's kind of neat, in my opinion. So that's how you can use both the entry or the exit ticket strategy using Microsoft Forms. So now let's look at another active learning activity using Microsoft OneNote. This is a tool that's integrated with Microsoft Teams. The name of this active learning activity is a graffiti notebook. So what you do is you state the topic for the day's class. You'll ask students to use OneNote to think and write a short graffiti style phrase that illustrates their thoughts about a specific topic. The collaboration space inside of OneNote will be used for the activity. Another thing you can do is actually click on view, show authors to reveal the authors of the content if desired. If people ask, well, who wrote this? Who drew that? This is a nice way to reveal that kind of information to your class if you wish. Consider soliciting volunteers to explain their graffiti to the rest of the class or leave the graffiti up during class that day as a visual reminder to everyone 
to ad and to address what they wrote in your lecture. And that's something they can just toggle between inside of OneNote. Let's take a look at how to do that using a hands-on tutorial. Right Now let's take a look at the Graffiti Notebook Active Learning Activity using Microsoft OneNote. So please remember our left-hand side again represents our instructor view. And the right-hand side will represent a student view. So inside of each one of the teams that's created in Microsoft Teams, you automatically have a notebook. So to find that notebook, you can either make your Teams window very wide, or if you just click on your drop-down menu, you'll notice Class Notebook appears. So when I click on this, you'll notice I'll get a Welcome to Notebook, and then I'll typically see an arrow on the left-hand side to open the navigation panel, as you saw when I hovered over for just a moment. You'll see that there are multiple notebooks, and what, each one of these represents a student for a team. Automatically, when you create a team, you'll have a welcome section, a collaboration space, a content library, and then your own notebook as the teacher. Inside of each one of these, you can have additional subsections. And then inside the sections, you can have different pages. So if I go to a test page right here and I widen out my window, you'll see this collaboration space that actually already exists. So in the student view, if I click on more and then click class notebook, then they'll begin to be able to see something similar. And part of the reason for showing you the student view is so that you see that sometimes they might be asking about where things are located because it looks a little bit differently on their screen. And if the app ever freezes up like it did right now, I would tell the students to restart it. So I can go back over to the team. Click on Class Notebook once again. And it launches their notebook. So you see, sometimes it might take a quick second, but that's where we need to be patient as instructors. So I'm going to click on the left-hand side. I'm going to click on the Collaboration Space and then using Collaborate, and then you'll see that they can see the same test notebook. Some of you may have concern that you saw that that view, each person could see each other's notebook. Don't worry, that's only because this is a test account that we're working with. But I wanna show you what could happen now for collaboration purposes. So if I go to Draw, and let's say I grab a marker, it'll give me some instructions of how to use it. You'll notice if I make a line that on the instructor page, if you give it a moment and click refresh, you'll be able to begin seeing the students work over time. This really depends on the speed of your network that you're working with. Okay, so we'll try to make, let's see, some words. So, hi, Dr. Walker. And you'll see over here that I've created uh, some text and a red line. If I scroll down into my notebook now, you'll notice that I see that high Dr. Walker. Okay, uh, let's try drawing a little bit more.
So you see, I just drew my signature over here, and then as it was happening, you actually began to see it appear on the screen. So with the graffiti activity, you could give your students a prompt. So let's start from scratch. Uh, we'll add a new page. So we'll say uh, graffiti time. So maybe we write a message to the student saying, please write one to three words that remind you of Valdosta State University. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to our student view and you'll see graffiti time appeared. So I'll click on that and then the student can see this. So I might, for example, decide to just draw out the word red. I could even add text, blazers. I could even maybe draw a palm tree. So it's kind of neat that you get to let your students be creative. And as I was creating all of that, you got to see it on the instructor view. So you may ask yourself, well, how do you know who did what? Well, if you click on view and you click show authors, you'll see each item is going to be labeled. Okay. So this is how uh, you use Microsoft OneNote to do the graffiti uh, activity. Um, so give this a shot in your classes. For this next active learning activity, we're gonna stay inside of Microsoft OneNote. So the name of this activity is Note Share. Tell your students early on in the class session that you'll have a midway break for them to share their notes and ask questions. Before you start the lesson, assign small groups. Add members to their respective groups inside of Teams using additional channels. You want to stop the lecture at a specific point and ask your students to share their notes with each other via the chat discussion in each group. For this mid-pause, encourage students to fill in gaps in their notes and to ask each other questions to, with their peers to maybe help fill in some gaps along the way. Alternatively, you can ask students to go back over their notes alone. After about five minutes, ask the entire class if there are any unresolved questions or issues that you can address before proceeding. Let's take a look at actually how to do this inside of OneNote using an example student. So now let's look at doing the note share activity inside of Microsoft Teams. So as we said earlier, you want to make sure that you create groups for your students. One way to do this is to add channels inside of your Teams for a given course. To do that, you go to the dot 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 next to the team name and click Add Channel. I'm going to call mine Group Blue. For privacy though, I'm going to indicate Private. This is going to make it so I can assign specific members to each group. I'll click Next. Then I need to add specific students. So I'm going to add our two test accounts, training 14 and training 15. Okay, you don't need to add yourself as the teacher because you're able to moderate all channels when it comes to Teams. And click Done. So you'll notice group blue. And now if I go over to the right hand side where we have our student view, okay, they're going to see group blue has now appeared. So this student can now type into this chat. So what they would do is maybe work on their class notebook. Okay, 
and maybe write things like topic, bullet point, two and three. And to format those, it just has uh, similar uh, functions to other word processing programs such as bullet points and numbering systems, as you can see here. So what I do next is a copy and paste. And then I'll go over to that team and then paste it. And you'll notice on the left hand side that with the instructor view, we can now see what the student wrote uh, in this. And only the other students that are in the channel would be able to see this type of information. So this is just one way you could leverage the channels tool inside of Microsoft Teams for your course. For this next active learning activity, we're going to use a web 2.0 tool called Flipgrid. This tool is integrated into Microsoft Teams. However, it does sort of ask students to uh, navigate to an outside web page. So we'll take a look at how to do that. But first, let's talk about what's this assignment, Gallery Walk. So instructors are going to set up posters, which could be video, audio, images, related to the day's topic on Flipgrid. Inside of Flipgrid, which is a website that's freely available to all instructors, they will create a grid for their class. Then they will create a topic for the students to reply to during class. Students go into Flipgrid and view the posters placed by the instructors and respond to the prompt that's written there with the poster. Students can then reply to each class member's response too. This platform allows for students to start activities in class and then finish them for homework if needed. Students can also reply to each other in a virtual Q&A. The instructor can also moderate the responses as well. Let's take a look at how to use this tool. So let's take a look at how to use Flipgrid. So if you're in your team, if you go to the plus symbol up at the top, and type in Flipgrid, you'll notice that it comes up as an option. And it'll ask you for a flip code or URL. So to do that, what you need, first need to do is go to, you've got to open up a browser and go to flipgrid.com. Okay. And you'll see that with an educator sign up, it says it's free. All right, let me log out of here just for a moment. So what occurs is you will use your Microsoft login. And then you will type in your credentials. And for security purposes, just like everybody else, I have to go through the 2FA verification. And a little tip that if you have not downloaded the Microsoft Authenticator app on your phone, that makes it a lot easier to do this. So what you will do for each one of your classes, you will build a new grid. Okay, so we'll just name this the training grid. And you'll see school email we'll use as the grid type. And you'll see a flip code down here. And I'm going to copy that information. Remember Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. Command C is for going to be for Mac platforms. And I'll click next, and then it'll ask what school email would you want students to be able to use to be able to get into the system. So it's important to let your students know they have to use their at valdos.edu accounts. Okay, and I can go to my grid. So what occurs here is that you would add a topic. So a nice topic to add at the start of a course is typically introductions. Please post an introductory video that showcases 
your favorite hidden talent. You'll see that you can moderate the videos in case you're worried about what might be posted. Uh, what that would mean though is that each time a student uploads, you would have to approve the video. Okay, you can limit the recording time as well. All right, and then click Create Topic, and you'll see a, there are a lot of other uh, items available as add-ons that you could try out. Okay, so we have that topic link ready for our students. If we use this one, it's going to direct the students exactly where to go for an exercise. So I'll click Copy, and I'm all set. All right, and the add a topic focus is just if you want to use uh, some sort of image or maybe other features as well along the way. Okay, so you see you'd have these instructions here and then the students would then record a response. So what does this look like from the student perspective? So first off, I'm going to paste in that flip code, and I'm going to click Save. Okay. And it's asking me to log in just one more time. And I want to show you this just in case you all run into something similar. Okay, so you could show your students this way by having them just click on the tab. Or you can see that when the tab is added, that it will automatically post a message in your general discussion. So let's take a look at what this looks like from the student perspective. So we have our iPad screen over here. And one of the reasons I wanted to show you all this just now is because if you connect a tablet to your computer, you can use QuickTime to do a movie recording to create a tutorial for your own students if needed. So in here, I'm going to go to Teams. And remember, this is a training view that I'm looking at. So on the right-hand side of the screen right now, this is our student view. Okay, so I'm going to just go to the posts, and then you'll see Flipgrid. So I'm going to click that. And then you'll see it'll launch the students in, and they'll say they have to log in with their Microsoft account. So I will use our credentials for our training account. Okay, and then students typically do need to use their passwords if they're not already logged in. So what happened now as a student is that they would have to showcase their hidden talent in this instance. So they click. And it'll say you can uh, open it in an app as well. There are mobile apps available for Flipgrid. I would strongly recommend that you ask your students who are using mobile devices, such as tablets or phones, to download it. So I'm opening inside of that Flipgrid app. Okay, so now I need to make the response of my hidden talent, my favorite hidden talent. So. I will click the record button, all right, and you see in the top right hand corner, it has a timer clock, so a hidden talent I'll put is that I have a double jointed thumb, okay? I can even write on here as well. Double jointed thumb, okay? And when the students are done, they will just click the next button that's in the bottom right hand corner they can go through and they can actually edit the video if they wish 
Okay. So they can go to it and they could trim part of the video if they really wanted to, to just show that hidden talent, and then click the check mark when they're done. Okay. And they can post a selfie. So they might say, okay. So it's a little thumbnail that's there and they click submit video and then return to the grid. Okay, so for me as the teacher now, going to the left-hand side view, I can click on that flip grid. Again, I will log in. You could also do this via your web browser, if you wish. Okay, and you'll see that that response has been posted there. Okay, if you click on it. Okay, I can even write. So you can then see the students' responses. Another neat thing is that students can actually reply to each other by now posting their own videos. So I could say I could record a video right now. Hey, that's really neat, Mr. Training 14. Hey, that's really neat, Mr. Training 14. Post a selfie. Well, let's redo that. Post a selfie. Is that I have a double joint? So you'll see now that if the students go back in later on on their own views, okay, so I'm going to refresh right now. If we look at the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that the student's initial video is there, but then they can also see that a reply has been made. Okay. And then if they click on the next person, they'll be able to see and then also hear their uh, reply as well. So this is a neat tool that you could probably use in some of your classes and then you could even extend it into homework as well. I strongly recommend it. So now let's take an, a look at another active learning activity. And this one is titled, Send a Problem. For this one, we're gonna use Microsoft Teams and I'll also demonstrate how you could use what's called Adobe Spark as well. These are both tools that are freely available to our students. So the send a problem activity consists of creating groups of two to four students so that they can socially distance but work on different problems during the same period of time. Each group would receive a problem, discuss the issues associated with the problem, and then offer possible solutions in a Teams channel. Problems can reflect a variety of complex questions, often without one right answer. Teams can record their solutions for later evaluation. In this activity, each group would pass the problem to another group, which also contributes a solution and passes the problem on. Most likely, the instructor would need to be used to uh, really move this uh, problem along at times. After a number of rounds, the teacher can call time and each group can evaluate and select a best solution for one of the problems that was previously assigned and report the conclusion to the class. If a teacher wants to step it up, they could have the students use a free platform called Adobe Spark Post if they want them to create some sort of graphical uh, image such, such as an infographic that displays their answer, solution, or however they came up with that solution. Let's take a look at how to do that. So remember with Send a Problem, we're going to have groups of students already created so that they can work on different problems throughout class time. The way I like to think about this as an instructor is Think about how maybe you've had students work and go to different stations to complete specific tasks. 
This is a way to do that without the students having to get up and move around in your classroom. Let them use their devices to work on these tasks together. So we can take, we can still use the same channel function like we talked about uh, for the previous activity, activities uh, earlier. So we have group blue here. You'll notice in group blue, they have the ability to share files with one another. So they can upload files here if they wish. Okay, this is a way for them to communicate. They can attach items using uh, this icon right here. They can also meet with each other too. So if you have some students that are face-to-face -face in class, but you have someone else that maybe is in another space or has to be at home for some reason, this is a way for them to all be able to see each other. Okay, so one way that you could really step up this assignment would be using an app called Adobe Spark Post. This would allow the students to be able to build graphical elements that they could share with each other to show maybe how they came up with a solution in terms of the steps or even the final product. So let's take a look at that on the right hand side of the screen here. Okay, so Adobe Spark is a freely available app for our students. And what they would do is they would log in with an education account using the login text at the bottom. So with this one, I'm going to use my personal account. And part of the reason I wanted to use this is because some of your students may actually already have their own Adobe account. I would strongly recommend to them that they use the company or school account option that's seen here instead of their personal account. There's certain features that are available with the company or school account that are not available with the personal account. So we would log in, and I will have to do a quick edit here so not everybody can see my password. Okay, so now we're inside of Adobe Spark. The students, even if maybe they've never done any graphical work before, they could just start off with a template if they wish. So maybe I go to school. And then, let's see, let's go for chess team. And the students can go in and then just start modifying some of these elements. So go group blue, okay? And then they can start adding all sorts of information here. They can bring in their own graphics if they wish to. Uh, a lot of neat things can be done. When they're done, they can go to the top right hand corner and that will allow it so that they can find out, do they want a solid, solid colored background or do they want it to be transparent, meaning that it's clear. So I'm gonna click solid color. And then I can maybe save that image. Okay, and then I could go to Teams, I could go to Group Blue, and then <clears throat> I click on my little paperclip, and let's see here. I'm gonna browse around. Let's try to cancel that out for a quick second here. Oh, we gotta click our little photo icon and allow them to access our photos. And then I can attach and send that photo and it goes to all the members of my group. So this is a place that we can be working together as a team. And then you'll notice on the left hand side, I can still see that as an instructor as well. So I can kind of check in to see what's going on. Okay, so any files that are shared with each other, they can even work on Microsoft Word or anything like that too. And the students will have a history of all the information discussed inside of their different uh, their different respective channels with each other. So this is a really 
neat tool uh, and a neat activity for your students to be working on uh, inside of class. So this is just another way to engage our students using mobile apps. We've spoken about a lot of active learning activities that we can utilize while working with our students in classes. So now I'd like you all to partake in an active learning strategy. What I'd like you to do is go back and find those notes from earlier in the session. Please copy and paste those into the collaboration space of the Microsoft OneNote notebook for our team. In this final slide, I wanted to provide a reference for additional information related to the platforms we discussed today. These web links are also going to be posted into BlazeView 101. I hope you learned how to leverage mobile technology to incorporate active learning in a face-to-face -face class while social distancing. Thank you.